Welcome back to another episode of Quarantined Coaches. We are with Campbell University coach Tyler Shoemaker. How are you, bud? Doing well. How about you? I am good. I am good. So we're going to tell the people the truth. And at the last time you and me talked, it wasn't exactly the most friendly conversation, but that's why we're here today. Um, you know, we're, there's a lot of emotion about this granting extra year of eligibility to players, right? And, right. Um, two sides to the story. I made an unpopular post uh, for most people representing one side of the story. And I heard from you about, you know, just it's hard for people outside of the clubhouse to kind of weigh in on this because it's way different inside the clubhouse. So with, right. that, with that said, I wanted to jump into that with you and dig into the clubhouse atmosphere and all of that. So, Let's start here. You know, what would you say your role is in the lives of your players? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is, is I try to be that mentor guy. Um, I want to be the guy that, that's helping them daily. Um, with me being younger and single, that they have to understand that no matter what, that I'm going to be there for them. And um, me being closer to their age, you get to know them. And you know their lives from baseball to school to their family. Um, it, it's a real close in atmosphere, especially at a place like Campbell, where um, we're a smaller institution in a smaller town. So um, there's not a whole lot to do besides baseball. So they're at the field a bunch. But that's my biggest role is being there for those guys and being that mentor um, leader that they feel like they can go to almost at any time. So the stance that I took was one that it's a logistical nightmare to give players an extra year of eligibility and you know what let's just say sorry seniors or whoever you got to bite the bullet on this one it sucks for the whole world right now um and, and you were not happy with that idea why not i think the biggest thing is that those guys have worked for um an entire year some their whole entire lives um to get to that point of being that senior that leader um, where it's their time to shine, their last go around, their senior day, um, their last time to maybe put on the uniform. You don't know when that is. And obviously it, it struck quicker than it should have this year. And, and just seeing those 14 guys, because we had 14 seniors, um, after we told them, like, we don't know what's going to happen. This might be your last time. Um, it might be your last go around. Um, it was disheartening, man. It, it was it, There were some tears. There was some – um, some laughs and because it was remembering the times that we'd, we'd spent. And the hardest thing is just knowing that um, they went through a whole fall. Um, they went through three or four, some of them five falls, and not to get your last spring where um, understanding that players and coaches alike falls tough. It's, it's a grind. Um, it's that 45-day window of practice, and it's individuals. It's weightlifting at 6 a.m. It's all the stuff that goes into it. Um, and then not getting to see that so quote unquote hay put in the barn time where it's time to go play for those guys it, it was emotional and tough. So what what would you say a guy like me outside of the clubhouse doesn't understand when it comes to that whole debate of should they get eligibility back or should they not get eligibility back right because well what is it that I'm that I'm missing or what is it where you would say hey you don't you don't get it and here's why I think I think the biggest thing is that um, a lot of people that aren't in the the college baseball realm where they're not with them every single day don't understand that it's a 365 day they job that these guys go through um, whether it be summer ball whether it be home for christmas break back to work whether it be the, the 45 day window in the fall to individual time um, maybe you're rushing to class rushing to weights rushing to practice and then the hardest thing is they do all that stuff for those 50 60 games in the spring um, they're not doing it because they they want to be good in the fall or they want to be um, a name that's on Twitter or a name that's on social media. They're doing it to go compete and win baseball games in the spring. And the fact that they didn't get to do that this year, that was the part that got me upset for them is because we put our lives into this and then we put our lives into it for the spring season. 
So then the argument would come back as like, you know, I understand that, I feel bad for the guys, but is that more of an emotional decision right now or more of an emotional appeal you're making rather than the logical one? I definitely think that emotion runs into it. Uh, but I think logistically over the course of time that it's going to work itself out more than some people think. Now, are there some people that are going to get a drawback from it or going to get burned from it or going to get hurt from it? Yes. But I also think that that feeling shouldn't go towards guys that have put their blood, sweat, tears, and their lives into Campbell baseball or into their program for the last four years. If it, you know, it's, it's terrible to say this, but at the end of the day, like they're the ones that have paid the price to get the, the benefit from it. So yeah, it's going to be a logistical nightmare maybe down the road for some guys. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it works itself out more than most people realize because there's going to be some transfers. There's going to be some, some grad students and there's going to be some guys that just say, Hey, I want to move on and I want to get on with my life and it's going to work itself out more um, at the end of the day than, than I think we realize. Right. So, and you mentioned it there, like there's definitely going to be, there already is negative effects. But when you talk about the roster spots, which is what every kid is concerned with, and rightfully so, fair. Right. Right. Fair absolutely. Enough, um, <clears throat> somebody is going to feel that effect, right, of mm -hmm. the rosters not having as much space as they did before. So you kind of touched on it there that if you could just kind of expand a little bit for me, you're saying that, yeah, it sucks for the younger generations, but the guys that are here now, they've put the work into it. So they kind of deserve to make sure it happens right now. I think that they've, they've already poured so much of their lives into the program that they're at and not specifically Campbell. Um, you could talk about any college program across the country, whether it be division one, division two, NAI, Juca, what, not whatever. They're pouring their soul into that program or they wouldn't be there. And so to not be able to go compete for a championship or um, have that senior day where you get that framed in jersey, yeah, that's a small gift. But at the end of the day, that means a lot to them and on top of that to their family because their family sacrifices as much as anybody for them to be at Campbell or them to be wherever. Um, so I think that that final year of competition is just so big um, because you never get that bond back. You never get that um, feeling that of being in the clubhouse your last year, being a leader, having young guys look up to you, uh, mentoring those guys. You don't get that back. And I think that that starts in the fall. That starts um, and, and when, it, when they get on campus. But I also think that it really – um, flourishes and comes to the light in the spring season uh, as you're going to compete for that championship. So my thing would be, okay, you know what, seniors or college kids, you bite the bullet, all right? Um, and then on the other side would be, you know what, high schoolers, you make the adjustment. So what would be your suggestion to the high school kids right now that are like, you know, what I thought might be possible for me is not going to be possible for me. Like, what kind of suggestions could you make for them to alter course to be successful? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I think the biggest thing that, that, that I can tell guys is now more than ever, and you've heard this cliche uh, for a long time, is, is pick, a right, pick the right school for you, right? And um, we've all heard that. We all go by it. But I think now is more importantly to do that than ever, because if you don't have that relationship with the coach or you don't do your homework, you know, now, now you might, you might not do your homework and you might get into the, the, the roster and you'd be the, the sixth catcher, the sixth infielder, whatever it may be. And you could have went to a different, uh, maybe a smaller school or maybe um, a school, maybe a little bit further away from home and been, the third infielder because they had some guys leave because they don't offer a grad program, um, stuff like that. I think it's really important to do your homework on where you're looking to go. And, and the last thing with that is I think that um, you got to start sending out more, uh, more information, more emails, more 
more um, video, all that kind of stuff to, to diverse groups. Don't pigeonhole yourself into, I want to be, um, I want to go to a division one in North Carolina. Well, there's 19 of them. So um, let's, let's expand our, let's expand our boundary. Maybe I, I want to look at division ones in North Carolina and Virginia. And then I want to look at D2s in, Nor in, in this section of, of North Carolina too, because I know they compete at a high level. Um, so being able to widen that horizon and send your video and send your stuff to a more diverse group um, that maybe doesn't have the grad school program or their, their roster is a little bit shorter or something like that, I think it's really important to do that, especially for 21s and 22s that are, that are getting into that time where it's time to, to make some college decisions. Definitely good advice there. What about kids that are committed? I know you can't speak to anybody but your own program, but like should the kids that are committed just, should they just reach out and ask the hard question to coaches like, hey, do you still have room for me? Like how should they handle it? Or Because I know a lot of them are sitting there on eggshells and just thinking like no news is good news, right? Like I don't right. want to. No, I'm with you. Um, I, I, I think that, well, I can speak for our, our coaching staff that as soon as this happened, we have, we have 10, 20, um, 20 commits, um, high school commits coming in in the fall. I made sure myself and our pitching coach, um, Tyler Robinson, made sure to text and call every single one of those guys and, and made sure that they knew that they, we were still honoring everything we offered them and that they still had a spot on our, in our roster um, and nothing had changed. Just because um, – you know, we're going to have some seniors that go on to, to grad school elsewhere or transfer, and some of them are just going to hang it up because they've had some injuries and different things. That's the, that's the hard part about baseball. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the biggest thing for 20s that are committed is reach out. Like, you got to ask the tough questions. Sometimes coaches don't have the answers right now, and that's the most frustrating part for us during this whole deal is we're waiting on some decisions from higher-ups you know, from the president to the AD to the president's cabinet, all that kind of stuff. We're waiting on some answers from them before we can tell our players those answers, before we can tell our 20s commits those answers. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I think it shows some, some real guts and some real, I, some real feel to want to be at that school. If you just text that coach that, that's been talking to you, recruiting you, all that kind of stuff, and say, Coach, can we set up a call? Just want to talk about what's going to happen this summer and this fall. Right. Honesty is the best policy and just going right at it. I think all the all the great coaches that I have met, they always talk about just ask the tough questions. Like, don't absolutely. Be uh, and, and at the end of the day, at the end to speak on that again, like that coach that's recruited you, they've built a relationship with you over the course of time. They've seen you on your visit. They've talked to you on the phone many, many times. They've probably FaceTimed you at some point. Like all that stuff is being done in, in the recruiting process. Just reach out to them. Um, you should have that relationship with them already or you shouldn't commit it. You shouldn't have committed there in the first place. Right. Yeah, I agree. I say the same kind of thing. Like, you know, if they can't answer the hard questions for you or ignore the phone call over and over and over, like, you made the wrong decision to begin with. If that's the <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So, okay, so there's another side to this, another angle that I try to look at sometimes logistically, and it has nothing to do with baseball. Um, I, you know, I, I've seen some things where, like, colleges are now going to have less admission spots, potentially, if they have, you know, a huge carryover of, of seniors staying from all their winter and spring sports. Um, also, less grant money uh, from like alumni grants and things like that. They're going to have less money to provide to incoming freshmen, non-athletes, just your high school student who's coming here to study. Um, I know you can't speak for every school out there, but what is Campbell doing to try to make sure that the non-athletes don't get left out in the cold? Yeah, it, that... The crazy thing is about this whole thing is we thought that we thought the same thing was going to happen at Campbell. Um, so we were kind of looking at at some of our scholarship funding and and re inputting some some information to make sure that our incoming guys were going to get what they were you know they were granted back in in the fall and make sure there was no issues there. Um, but at Campbell, the complete opposite happened. To be completely honest with you, um, they came out with what what they call a Campbell Promise Scholarship. Um, where we had some alumni grants and, and different things because we're a private institution. 
we were able to do this. It's called the Campbell Promise Scholarship. And every incoming guy that is a domestic student, so um, whether it be a JUCO transfer or a freshman coming in that has a 2.5 um, GPA is going to get $18,000 plus 2,000 housing. So a freshman coming into Campbell in the fall could potentially get $20,000 just right off the bat if they have a 2.5. Uh, and that's, that goes um, to show how important um, alumni are, but also how great the alumni are and, and financial situation is here at Campbell. That's pretty awesome. Um, there's definitely a bigger alumni base than I thought there, um, for sure. So, all right, so sum this up, going back to, to the main point. Why, in your opinion, is giving that extra year of eligibility um, the right thing to do? So I think that you put in, I said this, I said this a couple times, you put in the blood, the sweat, the tears, um, the time, the effort, um, the energy, all that stuff into your dreams and goals to play at the next level, um, to play at the highest level that your athletic ability and, and the right fit and all that stuff, it finally comes together. And you're a senior, maybe, maybe you've sat the bench or played behind a guy for two years. That's just, you know, sometimes you split time because there's other guys. That, that's the nature of the beast. But now it's your senior year. You're the guy, okay? You're the guy to go out there and get it done. and then all of a sudden that's stripped away from you. And um, you don't know you're on the uniform again. And I can think back to whenever I played, the last time taking the uniform off, it's an emotional time. And some of those guys are taking it off for the last time in March. That just, that's just not right. Um, because to compete for a championship, there's no feeling like it. And luckily for me, I've been on a part of back-to-back of -back championship teams. And then my first year coaching at a Division II, we won the conference championship as well. Um, but now to come into my, my fourth year where I feel like a bigger leader and a better mentor to these guys, to see them not be able to compete for, for a championship. Yeah, we could, there was talk that we could have played out our season and not been eligible for a tournament after they canceled the NCAA World Series. And our, guy, like, our guys are like, what? Like, that doesn't make any sense because ultimately at this level, what are you trying to do? You're trying to win a championship um, because those memories, that time with our in, in the clubhouse is it's you can't compare it to anything else in this world. And we tell our guys all the time, um, and I think this this kind of summarizes everything: is you get one shot, you get one shot with the club that you're going with right now because. Next year, there's going to be somebody drafted. There's somebody's going to be graduated. Somebody's going to transfer. Maybe a coach is going to leave. You never know. But the group that you have, you got one ride. You got one trip to try to get everything you want done accomplished. And to have that stripped away um, in March, man, there was tears. It was emotional. And that's why immediately I'm like, hey, let's get these guys back because they deserve it. It wasn't so much that – that we deserve it, that I want, our, I want Campbell to have this. It was the, the players that are in that clubhouse, the seniors, the, the juniors who have looked up to those seniors for three years, they deserve it, not us. And, and I think that's the biggest part is I'm going to fight for those guys no matter what, whether it be a bad call, whether it be, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Maybe they want a, a better meal on the road. I'm going to go fight to our head coach and say, hey, coach, we got to get this done. And when it comes to eligibility, I'm going to fight for those guys on that as well. I'm pretty sure you're going to be more popular than I am when it comes to this stuff. Uh, I love the, the passion, man. I love that we could disagree uh, and have a little argument previous and then say, hey, why don't we get on camera and talk about this? And, and <laughs> I think Absolutely. And, I, and again, I understand your side. And, and I think it goes back to those guys have to go to the right fit. The, the 21s, the 22s, it's more important now than ever to go to the right fit and do your research because at the end of the day, there's going to be a school for you. And I know we've heard that cliche forever, like, ah, oh, there's all, if you want to play college baseball, there's going to be a school for you. We've all heard that. But now it, you have to understand that there is going to be a school for you. Maybe it's Campbell. Maybe it's right down the road uh, at, at UNC or NC State or wherever it might be. But you have to do that research to find that place 
and it has to fit what you want it to be. And I always think it, it goes back to the biggest part of it is you have to build a relationship with those coaches and ask the tough questions. And when they're calling you to recruit you, hey, as soon as they get off that initial call, go look at their roster. Go check it. And Because I understand, like, there's going to be some log jams. There's going to be some logistical nightmares. But at the end of the day, I think if you go the right fit, everything's going to kind of work itself out gradually. Also, right at the end of the day, you need to just be good on the field. Be better than the next guy. And <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to play? Go yes. earn it. Like, hey, yes. what are you doing right now during this quarantine to get better? Like, right, right. <laughs> well, I think all these conversations are just, they're so good to be had for everybody. So I appreciate you coming on here and doing this with me, man. Josh, I appreciate you having me. I appreciate all you do. I've watched all the quarantine with coaches. Um, I see all your videos of players, and I think you do a great job of, of getting those guys displayed on, on social media. I think it's it's one of those things right now where, where coaches are sitting around not doing a whole lot, and we all have our phone. Like, I can sit here and I can probably check Twitter as easy as anybody, and I, and I see your tweets. I see the, the flat ground hitting and, and all that stuff, and um, there's many times that I've looked at a kid on there and been like, dang, we need to find out who that is. So appreciate everything you're doing, putting out content, and obviously meeting up with some coaches and, and getting some programs out there on the air as well.